Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rupayadu Bhattacharji and you're watching my channel which is named after me because I lack creativity. It's the 31st of January and I'm at the International Book Fair to shop for books. As you can see, the place is still really setting up and I came here as soon as they opened the doors to the public because as they say, the early bird does catch the worm. I'm going to be entering the halls straight away. These halls are practically the places where you get the majority of the English book. Out of this hall, most people only get independent bookstores that sell books in vernacular languages. I decided to enter Penguin Random Publishing House as my first bookstore of the day. This is one of my favorite bookstores because they do have a huge variety of Indian authors as well as foreign authors. I got the chromosome from here last year. It is a sci-fi book with time travel elements filled with Bengali culture and heritage and the main character who is on the cusp of retirement which is something we do not usually see in books a lot these days. There's a huge collection of Penguin's new editions of classics, especially Indian classics. I love the covers of these one, honestly. And speaking of foreign classics, there's a huge collection of them as well. But Frankly speaking, these classics are mostly the ones that are really popular like Jane Austen, Dracula, Animal Farm, etc. And these books are pretty expensive too because most of these are the leather-bound or hardbound copies. Beautiful but not pocket-friendly, so to say. And of course, I have my mortal enemy number one, Sally Rooney. I wasn't allowed to record inside Simon and Custer, so I just got the outside of it and opposite it is Crossword where I regularly shop books from. Crossword usually has a wonderful collection when it comes to the book fair, but if you visit their permanent stores, their collection is a pretty lackluster there and they usually have the popular books or books that you can find everywhere else. Coming to the young adult section, we find my mortal enemy number two, aka Colleen Hoover, aka the woman who sold more copies than the Bible. And ever since her newfound popularity, I have decided to blame all my problems on her. The pandemic, it's Colleen Hoover's fault. My examination, it's her fault too. And I really don't get what her books are doing in the young adult section because Verity is definitely not the book for young adults to read. My next stop was International Bookstore. This is their outside display. Fun fact, I learned that the most expensive place in a bookstore to display your books would be the window. They have pretty much educational books and books on science and stuff. They also have a few mangas and this year mangas are very popular at the book fair because apparently they sell better than the actual novels and mangas are also pretty trending right now in India. My sister too has taken up the route of becoming a weeb and honestly I can only support her from the sidelines because mangas are not the type of literature for me. And seriously, Colleen Hoover is everywhere. It's like she's stalking me or I'm stalking her. It could go either way. And fun fact, I also tripped over the ladder and nearly died a few minutes ago. I mean, I'm exaggerating but it was pretty traumatic for me. These copies of classics are very beautiful. I feel the urge to buy every one of them but... I can't. They're very expensive. I pointed at the secret history right now because it's under the children's book section. Like, are you kidding me? The book literally starts with murder. Whatever child opens that book will never open another book again in their life ever. I then decided to enter Starmark Bookstore. Starmark is another bookstore that I usually go to whenever I'm in the mood for buying new books. They have a very good manga collection as well as a comic collection. And as someone who is recently getting into detective comics, these were very fun to check out. So if you're a comic fan and in Kolkata right now, you should get to the book fair to get some comics. And by that I mean get there as fast as possible because you're only seeing such a variety of books because it's the first day. By the end of the weekend, this place will look like an apocalypse because people do buy that many books from the book fair. It is the Kolkata International Book Fair is the largest book fair in the world in terms of books sold and it is also the world's largest non-trade book fair. But in terms of the world's largest book fair in general, it falls third after the Frankfurt Book Fair and the London Book Fair. I got out of the hall and I ventured towards the international stall. This year's focal country is Spain, which is a major reason why Spain has a huge hall for itself. Now, these books are not for sale. Most of these books are in Spanish and are just there to encourage cultural exchange and promote Spain's cultural heritage. Last year's theme country was Bangladesh and Bangladesh this year too has a huge stall of its own, big enough to rival Spain's. These books are mostly Spanish classics and novels that are very popular in Spain currently. 
translations of english books and bengali books into spanish you can see the iliad translation i just crossed that book and further on you might be able to notice gitanjali by rabindranath tagore's translation into spanish after exiting the spain uh, spain stall i walked towards the second hall the halls are usually named after some eminent persons of bengal or of india as a whole usually freedom fighter i have no idea who whom this one is named after as soon as i entered the hall though there was this news reporting thing going on and i needed to escape the commotion because if i did not i would probably not have been able to enter the hall so i entered into future which was the first book stall that i saw and honestly i have never seen futures book stalls out of the book fair i have no idea if they even exist or only crawl out of their caves to at book fair they too have a pretty same book collection classics colleen hova joy G R R Martin, Rick Riordan, The Maze Runner, popular books that you'll see everywhere. Usually, the books at the book fair are decided by what's trending at that time because the main goal is for the books to sell well. They also have Prince Harry's memoir, which I guess if you are interested in the royal family's dirty laundry, then you should get it. The Oxford A P J book stall is one that I went to last year as well. It is one of the oldest bookstores in India. They recently had their hundred year. um celebration if i'm not wrong they had a pretty diverse collection of books they also had manga box sets there were a lot of people in this book stall and there was very little space to walk around so i took as many clips as i could get without getting trampled This is also one of the first bookstores where I saw the Poppy War series at and honestly it deserves more love because it is an amazing fantasy series and I am just glad to see they didn't put the Poppy War in the young adult section or worse the children section here She who became the sun is another favorite of mine I don't talk a lot about it on this channel but I am very excited about the sequel and that was my sister who I cajoled into paying for my books After exiting the last hall I decided to wander aimlessly around the fair looking for any stores or books that interested me or caught my eye Mansi Publishing House is a store that I went to last year as well I'm glad to see so many returning bookstores it just means that their business is going well Mansi Publishing House is an independent bookstore so if you're coming to the book fair I'd recommend checking out the independent bookstores as well instead of going to the chain bookstores or the bookstores that uh, that belong to corporations or already franchises Alice Osman's novels were my favorite Two years ago, Radio Silence is the only one that I have not read, but I decided to not get it because I don't feel like I would enjoy Elise Osman anymore as I have matured over the years a lot. This store had a lot of fantasy and YA fiction and Babel as well, and Piranesi. Piranesi is something that I was thinking of buying, but I decided not to because I really don't see myself reading it in the next four months. And that is my new rule: don't buy books unless you see yourself finishing them and reviewing them within the next four months. They had few Bengali books and Hindi books as well, as well as books that have already been adapted into popular TV shows, children's books, coloring books, the like. Everything that you can think of, you'd probably find it. at the book fair this year's collection has been very good morte hai to morte hai to sonai bodi lalon morte kon kothai akhon After enjoying the Baul song for a few minutes I decided to enter Rupa Publications and I was absolutely amazed with the quality and quantity of the non-fiction books in this store. The previous stores that I had visited mostly had fiction books but this one had non-fiction books, military books not only on India but also on neighboring countries and the West as a whole. There were religious books as well so There were also memoirs of eminent politicians, autobiographies, biographies, whatever you could think of that could fall under um non-fiction you'd probably find in this store. They also had a very diverse collection of classics. I didn't see these many varied and different classics at bookstores before this one, and they aren't only stocking the popular ones like Pride and Prejudice, Dracula, Frankenstein. They are also stocking the little known ones the ones that are not as popular and these ones are pretty cheaper than the ones at the other stores of course i'm getting 
few and if you're in kolkata you should come to this one as well i love the 1984 cover it was definitely a very unique one i do have like two copies of 1984 not of my own accord one was gifted to me by my friends and one the copy that i bought for myself my last stop for the day was family bookstore because i didn't have it in myself to walk around anymore i decided to call it a day cut my losses to the last bookstore and return home i don't remember if i visited this one last year but it feels a bit familiar it's good to see john green and stephen king again because these two authors monopolized the entire book fair the past few years before the existence and popularity of book talk these two were the authors that you would see everywhere when you entered the book fair This store too had a hearty collection of mangas and it was just my luck that these stores none of these stores with so many mangas had the one that I was looking for. I went towards the international section again because this way le- led to the food court. This was Thailand store. It is actually Thailand's first year at the bookstore accompanied with France, Russia, Peru and few other Latin American countries. Thailand is the newest addition to the book fair. This area is a bit littered because setup is still going on. Most of the stores in the inter- international section haven't opened yet. Last but not the least, I got something to munch on because I was feeling very hungry after Since all of you voted on my poll that you wanted to see everything that I bought from the fair in the same video, of course I am going to be delivering. So here's whatever I bought from the fair. I've got this one bag full of books and another tote bag full of books. I'll show you one by one what I bought. So the first book that I bought was Legends and Lattes by Travis Waltree. I have been following this author on his social media platforms for a long time and I have seen the hype for this book. This book is supposed to be a high fantasy with low stakes and set in a cafe where an adventuring orc has abandoned her adventure party and has opened up a coffee shop to embrace her new destiny. I'm really excited to read this book frankly because I do not read a lot of high fantasy. I usually stick to low fantasy and more military fantasy. I don't go around reading a lot of what people may call cozy fantasy. So I'm really excited to see how this book will turn out and of course I'm going to be reviewing this on this channel as well. So if you would be interested in any of that and you're a first time watcher, make sure to like, share and subscribe. The Village of Eight Graves by Seishi Yoko Mizo. I'm pr- probably pronouncing that wrong. As you have seen in most of my video, I am a pretty bad name pronouncer. So don't take my pronunciation, search it up for yourself because whatever I'm saying, it's probably not right. Now, my reasoning for buying this book was just the pretty cover. I looked at this pretty cover and I was like, you know what? I'm getting this book. I don't care if I may not read it in the coming 4 months. I just want it and that is not solid reasoning but in my case it worked out and it's a murder mystery with a very unique premise so I think I can make it work out and I'd probably like reading this book. Next up is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshpeg. The girls on Instagram and BookTok hyped the hell out of this book. I mean, there was this time period where I couldn't scroll on my for you page without coming across people screaming about how good this book is and how unhinged the main character is, and I have been eyeing it for a long time. I checked it out on Amazon, it was a bit expensive. So when I found this at the book fair, I was like, "You know what? I am getting it." My dog keeps playing his toy in the back, so if you hear a sudden squeak, just ignore it. I don't know much about this book ex- except that a woman gets tired with her life and decides to sleep for a year. I only know that according to the title, I have not even read the synopsis. I am just going with the hype in this case. And honestly, if I hate this book, it's all on me because I shouldn't believe the hype. Next is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I have not read a lot by Neil Gaiman. Actually, I have only read one book by Neil Gaiman. It is co-authored by Terry Pratchett, which is pretty obvious, it's Good Omens. I watched the show, I loved the book, so I thought, why not check out each author in particular? I have read a lot of the Disc World series by Terry Pratchett, so I thought of giving Neil Gaiman a chance as well. I was originally going to get American Gods by Neil Gaiman, but this one caught my eye, and I thought the cover and the premise were both very unique, so I decided to get this one. Next is Babel by R. F. Kuang. 
I know, I know, I have a huge long video essay on my review of Babel where I say that it is a book that is pretty underdeveloped and how I was expecting more from it. But honestly, I am a huge Arif Kuang fan and I love supporting authors of color. So obviously, since I do not already have a physical copy of Babel, I piled it online while I was reading it. So I thought of getting the physical copy because I felt bad about pirating it. And even though I did not enjoy this book enough to give it a 5 star, I still think that it is a good book and something that more people should check out. And also the people on Instagram who are calling this racist towards white people. I only bought this book to spite them. I think that is my life goal in buying this book. The next book is The Fire Witness by Lars Kepler, which, which I learned recently that Lars Kepler is not a singular person, but rather a husband-wife duo who write thrillers. Now this one is not one that I bought for myself, instead my mother bought this for herself since she read The Hypnotist by Lars Kepler and really enjoyed that book. She's been getting into more of their works and I don't know much about it so I'm just going to keep it. Next I've got The Plague by Albert Camus. I have heard a lot of praise about The Stranger by Albert Camus if I recall that correctly. So I have not picked up that one yet, but I decided if I needed an introduction to Albert Camus's work, I'd rather start with The Plague, which sounds right up my alley. I do love historical fiction, especially historical fiction written after World War II, since that was a very devastating effect that altered the course of history. And also because I had been learning about the Second World War in class, and because of it, I decided to read more books set after the Second World War. I wanted to see more of the effects of what happened during the war instead of what was actually going on during the war. And the plague by Albert Camus explores a lot of that along with people fighting against an actual plague set in a small town. I think that this one will probably be a bit difficult for me to get through since I have not read classics in a long time but I am getting back into the habit of reading classics so this might be a good start for me. Next I've got a bunch of mangas that my sister bought for herself. <clears throat> There's Jujutsu Kaisen 2. She didn't buy 0 or 1 because she saw the series so I don't know, I don't know much about it. So I'm just going to skip through the mangas. There's Death Note 1 and One Piece 1. Now this one though I'm pretty excited to read since I watch a lot of YouTubers who talk a lot about One Piece. So I want to see what the hype is all about and why people love it so much. Next I have The Rubiyat of Omar Khayyam which is a philosophical poem originally written in Persian but translated into English with some added notes and etc by Edward Fitzgerald. This one too was bought by my sister though I am excited to read it as well. I as a reader have not really explored many different forms of classic poems or epics as they are more popularly known and I do want to start exploring different epics from different cultures like the tale of Gilgamesh. The Biyat of Umar Khayyam is obviously one of those epics. Then I've got The First Man on the Moon by A.G. Wells. I read The Time Machine by A.G. Wells a few years ago and I absolutely loved A.G. Wells' writing style. It borders a bit more on the scientific explanations of how the things work. But then again, I enjoyed the explanation behind everything that is going on. The sci-fi aspect is obviously very enamoring and I do want to read more of his works, which is exactly why I bought this book. And last but not the least is The Phantom of the Opera. Now this one too is a very popular classic and one that I have been dying to read for a long time. Now I didn't read it for so long because I was unable to find a physical copy of it from the bookstore that I usually shop at. But since I got the copy here and it was like 250 rupees, I obviously got it. Now, this was the entire stack of books that I got from the book fair and I'm, I'm just going to keep them down before i drop them so this was it for today thank you for watching be safe during this pandemic and if you did like this video then like share and subscribe i have got some things linked in the description like my review of babel and my other videos and i guess that's just it goodbye